Uh, I'm Steve Drankshaw with uh, Brown and Caldwell, and I'm going to be your host today. Um, of course, as uh, always, when we start one of these, there's a, a number of thank yous to give out. Um, and so thank you to PNCWA board and for uh, Haley Falconer from the City of Boise's leadership to create these events and provide this valuable education experience for our sector. Um, a special thank you to Brittany Birch and Elliot who uh, had to pivot pretty significantly this year in order to uh, pull these uh, series together and get this going. And a uh, special thank you to them for uh, really giving us the opportunity to have communications go first um, and to give us our own session uh, that's, that's focused on such an important topic. Um, a special thank you uh, to our sponsors this year. We really couldn't do this without you. Um, our sponsors are Brown and Caldwell, Carollo, Jacobs, West Yost, Leeway Engineering Solutions, uh, Slade in Construction, HDR, Tetra Tech, and Kennedy Jenks. Um, uh, it's a huge thank you to you all this year. I know um, uh, these have been sponsors that have supported PNCWA for a long time, and we're grateful to have you back with us. A uh, special thank you to our speakers today. Uh, I have I've previewed these presentations, and you are all in for a treat. Uh, these are some pretty incredible speakers, and um, I think you're going to be uh, pretty amazed by what you see. Um, and thank you as attendees for showing up and being a part of PNCWA. Um, we can put on a lot of events, but if, if folks don't show up, uh, then they're not very beneficial. And so we're grateful for you to be here today. Um, if you aren't already a member of PNCWA, uh, we hope you'll um, join and get access to our expansive resources um, within the website, as well as um, uh, the networking abilities we have. Um, you also get access to the Water Environment Federation's materials as well. Um, and you can join committees like the Communications Committee and get more involved in events like these. Um, just a little bit of overview of our sessions. Um, we want you to use the chat function there on the right hand side, I believe is where it is. Um, it won't disrupt the speakers. They aren't going to see it because uh, they don't have uh, that screen up. So um, it really helps to make this an engaging and fun time together. Um, and so Go crazy with the chat. Uh, if you hear something you like, um, you know, put it in there, tweet it out, do whatever you need to do um, to let us know that you really are excited about that. If you have a question, if you can just try and lead it with a big Q, um, I'm gonna be looking for those during the sessions. And then we have about a five minute Q and A at the end uh, to answer any of those questions. On the uh, networking front and how Feedloop works, uh, networking is over there. Uh, there's a button. You can chat as individuals. You can create groups. And once you start chatting with somebody, you'll have the option to uh, have video with them. So uh, feel free to use that function as well. Um, and it's pretty exciting. Um, if you enjoy this session, uh, feel free to sign up for the, the remaining five. Um, we have some really exciting events planned all through February. And the next one up is Nutrients. Uh, Nutrients is next on October 28th. Um, and with that, I think we can get to the show here. Um, so first up is our keynote address. Um, this is gonna be given by Stephanie Corso and Ariane Shipley. Stephanie Corso and Ariane Shipley are co-founders of two mission-driven organizations, Rogue Water and the nonprofit Rogue Water Lab. Uh, before going rogue, Stephanie and Arianne worked for a decade in their respective municipal water utilities as public educators and communicators. They credit their love for the industry to the men and women they work side by side with in the field and at treatment plants. Together, they've amassed over 30 industry awards for their creative communication strategies and content. They are better known as the H2 Duo, and you can find them hosting the Water in Real Life podcast and the Catalyst Mastermind Summit through their water lab which provides the water industry with resources designed to cultivate innovators and communication in the public and public education. They're entrepreneurs, innovators, mothers, best friends, and 100% super water nerds. Uh, please welcome Stephanie and Ariane. hype music that is if that sounded familiar that means that you're a water and real life listener that's right and that is our that's our podcast music so uh 
if you saw that picture of us, we had our hype button. We couldn't uh, 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 this morning because y'all's WEF delegate, PNCWA's WEF delegate, Christy Steiner, she snatched she that stole guy it. at the YP uh, or the UMC conference and she said she's holding it hostage until we make it hype again. So hopefully after this, we will have earned our hype button back. But we're so honored to kick off this summit series dedicated to communication. And to be honest, we're excited to be involved with really anything PNCWA does. With our roles, we get to meet and speak with professionals from across the country. And we can say with absolute confidence that PNCWA, y'all are the leaders and change makers that we need to bring our industry into the future. So anytime we're asked to do anything with y'all, we say, 100. 100. And shout out to Stephen, just thanked a bunch of people, but we wanted to take a minute. Thank you for putting together this amazing lineup of professionals. I mean, this is epic. Karen, John, Amanda, Colin, Greg, Kathy Bailey, all bring incredibly diverse perspectives to the conversation, not just from their backgrounds, but from what they'll be teaching y'all today from internal communication to storytelling, to events, to stakeholder engagement. This lineup really is proof that communication is at the confluence of everywhere we do business in our industry. So y'all take good notes. Um, you know, we also believe that our role as the rogue communicators of the industry is not just coming in and teaching comm skills and tools, but to also translate the value of the tools and skills outside of that, that you may never have thought could help you in your job in water. Our mission on our wall Whoop. is to revolutionize the water industry, which of course, through the lens of communication, which means we spend some time annihilating some of the myths that are out there about communication in our sector. One way we do this is by owning our own learning journeys. And I'm going to let the queen of authenticity, Ariane, share some of her stories in real life. Oh boy. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. Um, I used to believe that the myth that you had to have the word communication in your job title to communicate to the public. While working for a city, I was told and made to believe that because my job title was public education, I had no business in the traditional communications world. I was told to stay in my lane. I could stand in front of a group of people, teach them about water, teach them about conservation, drought, their water bill, their water treatment process, et cetera. But that wasn't communicating. That was educating. And there's a big difference, Ariane. Ro I roll there. Yes, communication and education aren't the same, but you must be able to communicate effectively if you are going to educate. It was very clear to me early on in my career that I would have to take professional development into my own hands if I wanted to become a better communicator and public servant. So I attended communication presentations, marketing and branding conferences, every book that Stephanie over here threw at me, literally threw at me, and took a course to become a certified public communicator. Essentially, what I did was flip the script and started to own the fact that I am a communicator. In 26, 2015, in the spring of that, um, a few months before I graduated from this program, our North Texas region had just ended a five-year drought, water five-year drought, and water restrictions were lifted. Everything I had taught my residents about conserving water was literally thrown down the storm drain. So as you can imagine, residents were pretty heated about how their bills doubled and tripled compared to last year and the years before. Phone calls erupted, social media blew up, the news ran segments, the entire Metroplex, all of Dallas-Fort Worth, went straight into this conspiracy theory that somehow local governments all got together and created this algorithm in the billing systems that increased their bill amounts. Because we had no proactive communication strategy in place, remember, I was just an educator, we could only react. My directors and irrigation staff spent the entire summer answering calls, auditing the billing system, meeting face-to-face, -face, making house phone calls, answering media inquiries to help people understand what was happening. And the result was our trust was damaged. Fast forward to the next fiscal year, 
I now had these three little magical letters behind my name, certified public communicator, CPC, <laughs> behind my name that gave me these credentials that quieted the haters and started, we started a collaborative communication committee. I got budget to implement my education and now new communication plan. I made the case to hire a second person, this gal over here, and we hit our community hard with proactive, purposeful, and effective communication right before um, the high water bill season started again. We put in all this hard work to rebuild trust. And if you could guess how many house calls, phone calls, and media inquiries my director at the time had to take for the summer of 2016 about high water bills, would you believe the answer was zero? <laughs> Goose egg, zero. In fact, we actually had ambassadors, community members doing the work for us. So the moral of my story is mad respect for those who have communication backgrounds and job titles, communication in their job title. But everyone needs to realize communication skills are fundamental and they're important at all levels. And it doesn't matter what your job title is. Some of these people you're going to hear from today, they do not have communication in their job titles, and yet they've used communication to create amazing change in their communities. So that is Arianne's <laughs> personal case study on one myth to bust is that we all have an incredibly important opportunity for us to invest in our own communication skills, no matter what seat at the table we have. Here's a few other myths that I wanted to bust. Number one, communication is cute. <laughs> We've literally had somebody come up to one of our presentations and kind of verbally pat us on the yes. head. Communication is not cute. It's foundational to trust, to an environment that fosters innovation. Here's another myth. Communication isn't technical. Um, of course, it's technical. What's more technical than neuroscience? Just asking. Just wait till you hear what Karen's got to talk about today. Lizard brain. Communication's just fluff. Communication is not fluff. It is imperative to project success. It saves millions of dollars in elim eliminating and avoiding delayed projects. It saves billions in lost time and productivity. Uh, ask Tom Hickman, our buddy, CEO, Twalton Valley Water District, about his own story. If you're too afraid to ask him, <laughs> listen to episodes 18 and 19 of the Water in Real Life podcast. It was life-changing for mm -hmm. us. Last, uh, last myth I want to talk about is that communication can't be measured. Eh, wrong again. It can be measured. It just can't be measured as an afterthought. It has to happen from the beginning of the project. It requires the same level of design work strategy and human capital as any other project or project uh, piece requires. So why do I think it's so important to drive these messages home, to bust these myths? Because I, in my bones, believe that we're at a crucial tipping point for our industry. So I'm going to tell a story of my own, uh, but it's someone else's story. It's Brene Brown's story. If you've listened to the podcast or follow us on social media, you know that we are huge fans, especially me, of Brene Brown. Uh, she's a social scientist, researcher, and she has a great podcast called Unlocking Us. On a recent episode, she was telling the story about uh, the time she got to spend time with Pixar. Yes, Pixar, the people who make amazing cartoons like Monsters, Inc., Bugs Life, Coco, uh, all of those. And she had a conversation with one of their producers named Darla Anderson. And Darla, Darla was talking to her about the three-act story, which is the story model that they use for the um, productions that they do at Pixar. So I'm going to drive, I'm going to create a few parallels here. Act one is where the protagonist the main character, the hero, is called to an adventure or a journey, and they accept. And after they've accepted this journey, they are met with an inciting incident. So act one for the water industry is really the past 100 years, up until about the point a decade or so ago, maybe a decade or two ago, where we started to get a little uncomfortable you know, infrastructure was reaching its shelf life. We weren't seeing the same level of federal investment. Customers were starting to ask a lot of questions about what was in the water, about lead. So things were beginning to get uncomfortable and we were realizing 
that we had a problem. That takes us to act two. Act two is where the protagonist looks for every comfortable way to solve the problem. Every easy way to solve the problem, the low hanging fruit, the things that we know, every way to solve the problem that does not require the hero to be vulnerable. They're constantly saying, how can I solve this without being vulnerable? And it's not until the lowest of the low moment happens where our protagonist, our hero realizes that I can't solve this problem without vulnerability. So for me, that's, that's where I feel like we've been for a minute. For 100 plus years in an, as an industry, we've been the silent utility. We've only spoken up when something is wrong. We've only communicated with our customers when something's wrong. We've only engaged with our customers or, or our community when they've demanded it, when they've showed up at our council meetings, when they've delayed our projects. We've been cruising through Act 2 desperately trying to solve the problem without being vulnerable which for me in this case means without genuinely engaging with our customers, without taking communication in our sector seriously, which means to Arianne's point, acting primarily reactive and not proactively. So the tipping point for me is this tipping point. I believe that we're at this precipice of entering act three. And act three is where the protagonist, the hero learns the lesson, proves that We've learned the lesson, proved it at all costs, which is primarily vulnerability. And it's all about redemption. Our character has gone on this journey, has faced trials and tribulations, but has learned about the value of stripping it all down, putting ourselves out there, putting themselves out there for the hero and being brave and vulnerable. We cannot, we will not make it through act three if we don't own our stories, humanize our industry, and genuinely connect with our communities. I miss my municipal water peeps every single day. I lived boots on the ground with them for 10 years, and I love this industry the way that I do because of them. But no one get mad at me for this next statement, but this is really what I feel in my heart. I think the tagline, water's worth it, is great but I think it misses the mark because water is only worth it because people are worth it. And those people are worth whatever uncomfortable, crucial, vulnerable, challenging conversations and moments and scenarios we have to put ourselves through to come out of act three as the heroes that I believe and know every single, every single one of y'all are. And I know that asking you to do something and build on a skill that may be out of our comfort zone, maybe out of our box, like communication, like emotional intelligence, all of these things. I know it won't be easy, but nothing in life having ever is. Going back to Pixar, their founder, Ed Catmull, in this amazing book called, his amazing book yeah. called Creativity Inc. says, I believe life should not be easy. We're meant to push ourselves and try new things which will definitely make us feel uncomfortable. We've been uncomfortable for three years now. So, <laughs> 34 for me. I challenge you all to have an open mind for these communication masters that you're about to hear from and an open heart for the communities you serve. And as I'm sure you'll hear from Greg Wukash, these are your neighbors. They really are. We absolutely believe that water is the catalyst for community transformation. I'm say that again. Water is the catalyst for community transformation. Your role is key and communication is foundational to the mission. So from the bottom of our hearts, I want to say thank you for your service to, the, to our industry and for providing daily those basic human rights to the men, women, and children in your communities. So I wanted to close with some words from your very own PNCWA president, Haley Falconer. She closed the annual business meeting a few weeks ago with these words. And for me, they were a really strong indication of the value that story holds for this organization, its members, and the industry at large. She said this, just as I had my story of what brought me to PNCWA, I'd like you to consider your own story. Think about what ignited that passion in you 
What was that moment or time in your life that you haven't looked back from? If we harness that same passion and draw from our stories, there's nothing that this organization cannot accomplish. Hmm. We agree 100% because just like one of our favorite quotes says, those those who tell the stories rule rule the world. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your summit and um, have a great day. Hey, uh, thank you so much, uh, Stephanie and Ariane. Um, That was amazing. Uh, You'll see these little surveys pop up. This is just for uh, CEU stuff. So if you you need those, um, this will help track, make sure you get those. Um, For each session, you're gonna have to pop down to the next one. So the next session is gonna be uh, from Karen DeBaker. So if you wanna leave the summit keynote and pop down to session one, lure with the lizard brain lingo, Uh, I'll see you all over there.